In this video, we're going to go through the activity number two, which is called Person Class. And so this will be our first chance to create an object-oriented uh, program using Eclipse. So this is the uh, point where we left off from last lesson. I'm going to close the project and close the file. We're going to create a brand new project here. So let's go to File and choose New, and I want a Java project. So in this one here, let's call it Person Class. And once more, we're going to have the Java runtime version 1.8. So I'm expecting to see all the little files over on the left side for my project. Well, if you can't find something, you can probably look around and you can see it in the uh, options here under Windows. So I want a Project Explorer. And that will show me the projects that I've created. So the Person class is the new guy. And let's choose the source. So now I'm going to create the uh, starting class for my uh, project here. So let's go to New and choose Class. And I'm going to call this thing Person Class Demo. Once more, I want to have an entry point. So I'm going to choose the main option here and click Finish. So this is where I can run my program and print things. However, in this program, I'm going to create a new class called Person. So back to the package area right click choose new and class and this time I'm going to type in the class called person and leave this item unchecked I do not want a main entry point here so when we model things in object-oriented programs we create a class that uh, is named after a object so in this case we are modeling a person so the uh, data that we're going to store on a person includes their age, their name, and their weight. And so we're going to create some variables. Each variable has a modifier called either public or private, usually, and then the data type, integer, and then age. So we'll talk about these private things in a minute, and we'll understand them better. So I'm going to create a string for his name, and then I'm going to have a float value for his weight. So you probably remember from other programming, hopefully, that floats are like decimal numbers. Now, these three items are called the properties of a person. And so we could have had many properties, such as their address or their IQ or their game preferences or a link to their URL. You can have lots of things that go into a person object. For this case, we're just keeping it simple with three of them. In object-oriented programming, we have what's called constructors, and we'll see what this looks like here. So public is the name we're going to type, and then we're going to use the exact same name of the class. So you can see that the class name of this file is called person. And this function that I'm creating, called a constructor, has the exact same name as the class name. It has to be spelled letter for letter equally. Now, we're going to use this when we create a new instance of a person in our program. You'll see what that looks like in just a jiffy. For right now, I'm just going to save this and switch back to the person class demo file. So now, here's how we can use this class. I'm going to create a variable here, and it's going to be of type person. And let's call it P. Now, if I type in the word new person, with a parentheses and then a semicolon, we have no errors. So in object-oriented programming, this thing here, the P, is called the instance. The person is called the class. Let's see what we can do when we create a new person. Now, earlier I had told you that a person is going to have three different properties. We're going to put these in our parameters in the function of our constructor. So for instance, I'm going to say int. I'm expecting an integer. And I'm going to use the letter a, which represents age. The next thing I'm expecting is going to be a string. And I'm going to use the letter n. And then finally, we're going to expect a float with the letter w. So these parameters usually match the properties that we've defined here in the first three lines of our class. So now, we're going to say that for every person, for instance, this guy, this new person over here we're calling P, we're going to have him get these properties. I'm going to use a keyword here called this. This means 
the current person that we're talking about, this object. And I'm going to say that the property for age is going to be equal to the parameter A that was passed to it. The same thing happens with name. And it's going to use the letter N. And this dot weight is going to be equal to the letter W. Now, where do these come from? A, N, and W. These come from back here where I'm creating my new class or my new instance of the class. You notice now I have an error. It no longer likes the way that I'm creating this person. It says here we have to have some changes to the parameters. So what I need to do then is over here is I need to give this thing an age. Let's say my first guy is 23 years old. His name is a string and we're going to call him Mike and his weight is going to be 145 pounds. And so now I have myself three parameters that match the constructor on the person object. Let's say I want to print some things about Mike now. If I say I want to do a system dot out print line and I want to print the person's name I could say P dot and I would expect to see things like his name, his age, and his weight showing up here as options in this object. I don't see them. I need to add something else to my person class. Let's come over to here and give some more space. What we need next is called a getter and a setter. So inside of an object like person, we have these modifiers that tell us that these variables are private means that nobody outside of these brackets can actually set or even view the values of age, name, and weight. And to create access to those we have another method called a getter. I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to label it as public. Public means that things or code from outside of the object can see this. So the first item is an integer and I'm going to say get age is my name of my function. And uh, the reason why I put integer in here is because it's expecting a return value. So I could return a value such as 9 and this function works. However, I want to actually return the value of the guy's age. So instead of 9, I'm going to put in here this dot age. And you can see the type ahead is helping me figure out what I'm supposed to type next. Let's save that and now let's go back and look at the person class demo. So if I now try to print somebody's values, I can say p dot and you can see a new item has shown up in my items that are suggested. Get age. If I click that and then I close it in a semicolon, I have a complete program now. So I've created a person, object, and a ability to get his age. Let's see what happens when I run this. And you can see down here I have a 23. Now I want to print other things. So let's go back into the person and create some more getters. So I'm going to say public. And this time I want to get his name. So the type that I'm going to return is called a string. So let's do a get name, this dot name semicolon and let's do one more let's say this is a public and this is a float value and we're going to call it get weight and we're going to return this dot weight what's wrong with the uh, previous code here we're missing the return statement so this method here or this function is going to return the value of his name. This one's going to return the value of his weight. Let's go back into person class demo and let's see if we can get some more information here. So let's see, I want to print out his name and his weight. So I'm going to do the same print line and let's type in p.get. And you can see I have get age, get name, and get weight are choices. So I'm going to print his name and I'm also going to print his weight. Okay, let's see what happens and when I run this program, I get 23 mic and 145.0.